So, friends, we continue to keep an eye on the news and events on the front lines of Ukraine and Russia. And let's dive right into the Kupensk direction. Here, according to the preliminary information, the Russians have started deploying newly created specialized units from Russian territory towards Kupensk. They still have hopes of breaking through and capturing Kupensk. There is a possibility that they don't intend to take control of the entire Kharkiv region, but rather aim to establish a buffer zone around the Lugansk region. As we can see, the forces that were assembled for the advance of Kupensk have been dealt a blow, and now new groups are regrouping. Let's see what they are capable of. Currently, it appears that there is only shelling along the front line and no new attacks have been carried out. But before we move on, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. In the area of Svato, attempts to break into Novoyevorivka are still ongoing and a significant number of shelling incidents along the front line persist. However, over the past day, the front line remains unchanged. In the Krimina and Siversk regions, the occupiers are once again attempting to break into Bilohorivka. It must be acknowledged that they are managing to advance closer to the settlement. Yet, the Ukrainian forces subsequently successfully neutralize them and the front line remains stable. However, yesterday, the occupiers launched a missile strike on Kramatorsk. It appears they are once again attempting to target military facilities, but the outcome is hidden somewhere unclear. The exact details of the strike are not available at the time of creating this update. In the Bakhmut direction, Russian activity is on the rise. Attacks are occurring simultaneously in three directions. They are attempting to regain positions on the northern flanks and are pushing towards Rihovo Silivka. Intense battles are also taking place for Ivanovsk, a location even Wagner's forces couldn't capture previously. As a result, the Ukrainian forces maintain their defense and the front line remains unchanged. In Klishivka, complex battles are also ongoing. Ukrainian forces hold the advantage and are repelling all attacks. However, due to the significant presence of Russian troops in this direction, breaking through to encircle Bakhmut remains very challenging. Additionally, the Russians are heavily shelling the area of Bilahora and the Ukrainian positions in Kurdumivka. We might witness attacks in this region soon, probably. In the Avdivka direction, the occupiers have suffered further losses. After retreating to their previous positions near Avdivka, they are now resorting to shelling alone. The front line remains unchanged, and further south, the Marinka battles are ongoing, but the Ukrainian forces are holding their defense, and the front line remains steady. Attacks on Pervomaiske uh, have also resumed today, accompanied by shelling on the village, yet no changes along the front line have been reported as of now. In the Vuhlidar direction, the occupiers attempt to break through to Vuhlidar, but as always, the Ukrainian forces successfully shattered the advancing group, resulting in an unchanged front line. To the west near Urajaina, there is currently not much activity. All parties are undergoing repositioning and reinforcing their positions. Additionally, the Ukrainian forces are preparing the territory with artillery fire for further advances. In the Zaporizhia direction, the Ukrainian forces continue to expand control territory and the gray zone is growing smaller. So geolocation videos released on August 25 indicate that Ukrainian forces have pushed their advance south eastward by one and a half kilometers from Novoprokopivka, which is located 13 kilometers southwest of Orihiv. On August 25, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the United States, General Mark Milley, stated that Ukrainian forces are currently attacking the main complex of Russian defensive operations along the direction of the Ukrainian offensive. Political leaders of NATO, of Europe, have defined winning. Uh, and uh, President Zelensky of, uh, of Ukraine has defined it. And, and, and what they've said, the way they've defined it,
mm -hmm. uh, is that Ukraine is a free, mm -hmm. independent, sovereign nation with its territory intact. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that? Why does that matter? Mm -hmm. uh, so for Ukraine, the fight is clearly existential. It's a fight for survival. Mm -hmm. uh, Russia uh, invaded uh, Ukraine with uh, several hundred thousand uh, troops uh, back on 24 February. Uh, it was illegal. It was unprovoked. Ukraine presented no threat to Russia. Uh, so it, it, it was a direct assault on the very principles uh, of the set of rules that were put in place at the end of World War II, uh, the, the rules that undermine, uh, underline the, uh, uh, the very existence of the United Nations, uh, and, and it's the rules that most of the international community is committed to, where uh, you do not change international borders and you don't invade other countries mm -hmm. uh, with military force uh, unless it's in an act of defense and there was no defense on the part of the Russian. This was an act of aggression, it was illegal, and it was unprovoked. Uh, so for Ukraine, it's a ba battle of survival. Uh, but for NATO, for mm -hmm. the rest of Europe, for the world, in fact, uh, it's bigger than that. It's, a, it's about those rules that were put in place in 1945 in order to create a more stable and prosperous and peaceful world. Uh, what President Putin has done is a direct frontal assault on those rules. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, the, the Russians will have to not have troops in currently Russian-occupied Ukraine. When that day comes, I don't know. There's many ways to get there. Uh, one of them, of course, is uh, through military means. Uh, and Ukraine is uh, conducting an offensive right now. It's a, it's a offensive that's been going on now for about, uh, I guess, eight weeks or so. Yeah, something like uh, that. It's very bloody, it's slow, it's, it's long, very slow. high casualty producing, uh, and very, very difficult. So the, the idea of militarily kicking out two or three hundred thousand Russian troops is going to be, you know, very, very difficult and challenging. Uh, a different way of getting at it is through negotiations and, and maybe that'll happen too. So, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, no matter which way it is, through mm -hmm. diplomatic means or military, or military means, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, uh, Ukraine must remain free, sovereign, independent with its territory intact. Uh, you and that's winning. So we wait the further development of the event. In the Kherson direction, the occupiers continue to strike at Kherson and other frontline settlements, but there are no changes along the front line. The occupiers are entirely unable to gain control even of the islands. The Ukrainian forces hold an advantage here in terms of artillery range and personnel, allowing them to gradually conduct operations to eliminate Russian forces on the left bank. However, um, there is currently no significant movements of our forces towards advancing into Crimea. After the noise about their chaotic common structure, the Russians released a video claiming that everything is fine and the chaos was fake, urging bloggers not to raise any further alarms. Вот они острова. А, у нас такая просьба ко всем блогерам и всем прочим, ребят. Не мешайте работать. Тот ажиотаж, который вы, блядь, развели в комментариях везде, он никому не нужен. Вы на данный момент действуете хуже, чем хохлы, наверное. Вот. От вас вреда на данный момент больше, чем пользы. Если вы хотите нам чем-то помочь, вот он окоп, вот он остров. Мы там частые гости, приезжайте, помогайте. Сейчас пойдем работать. А сидеть и писать комментарии, и обсирать кого-то, сидя на диване, ну, может каждый. И еще, мы не блогеры, мы не звезды какие-то. А вступать с вами в полемику и вести какие-то переговоры, дискуссии дальше мы не собираемся. Это единственное видео, которое мы записали, больше от нас видео не будет. Если хотите пообщаться, милости просим, нас в принципе знают все. Местные. Соответственно, приезжайте и пообщаемся здесь. Всем удачи. Острова. And in reality, we understand that the information reached the command which threatened the fighters and they urgently released a video contradicting their own words. I believe everyone understands that. Meanwhile, while Putin plans to mobilize an additional 450,000 people in the fall, Russia is facing a shortage of workers. 
Despite the huge population in Russia, this problem seems to be acute if he's already instructed to remove restrictions on employee minors. Putin has instructed the government to promote employment and stimulate the hiring of citizens aged 14 to 24 who are undergoing in-person education. To achieve this, uh, it proposed, among other things, to provide benefits to employees employers who hire individuals under the age of 18. Overall, everything is, in Russia is going according to their own plan, starting from the days of the Second World War and Kiev in three days. And it seems Prigozhin once spoke the truth that the end could come for Russia. У нас еще остался золотой фонд, который постепенно выгоняют, потому что золотой фонд – это мужики с яйцами. И они не готовы вылизывать задницу вышестоящему руководству, они готовы быть честными. Сегодня мы зашли в стадию кипения. Почему я честно все говорю? Потому что мы зашли в эту стадию. У меня нет права перед теми людьми, которые будут жить в этой стране дальше, им сейчас врать. Лучше убейте меня. Но я не буду обманывать, я должен честно сказать, Россия стоит на грани катастрофы. Если сегодня не отрегулировать эти винтики, то самолет рассыпется в воздухе. As we can see in Russia, they either remove or imprison anyone who speaks the truth. And that's all for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.